What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered about the History Studio and Affine Designer on the iPad? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back. My name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator and today we're going to talk about the History Studio and Fade Designer on the iPad. Now compared to the last studios that we've talked about, like the Tech Studio and the Transform Studio, there is not a lot going on here in the History Studio. So this will be a quick video, but hopefully it will help you to know what this studio does because it's confusing to a lot of people as to why it's here and what they can use it for. So let's go ahead, let's dive in and let's learn more about the History Studio here in Affine Designer. Okay, so here we are in Affine Designer and we are really on the very last studio in Affine Designer. So this is kind of a big moment for us to have made it through all the studios. We've been working on this for a while. And so the History Studio is going to be the very last one in that row on the right. And as you might expect, as with some of the other studios, you can actually do a swipe gesture on the History Studio to go backwards in time or forwards in time if you've already gone back. So if I swipe up on that little clock, I'm going to start moving backwards in time and you can see things are changing on my document as I go. And if I pull down, things are going to come back into place as I move forward in time. So that's very similar to being able to undo and redo steps, but you might want to be able to get into a little bit more detail on that. And that's where actually going into the History Studio comes into play. So go ahead and tap on the little clock and your History Studio is going to slide out. So there's a few things to point out in here, but this does not have as many features as some of the other studios that we've looked at. The first thing that we're going to look at is just this little menu up in the top right, and that is just a clear history button. So if you want to get rid of all your history, you can just clear it right there. The the main feature of the history panel is this list of all of the actions that you've taken previously. It actually only goes back so far though. It doesn't go back all the way to the creation of this document because there are lots and lots of changes that have happened in this document. I wasn't able to find in Affinity's documentation any exact number of steps that Affinity Designer on the iPad saves. So it's hard to know how far you'll be able to go back exactly, but if you're scrolling through this list and you find a point that you want to go back to, you just go ahead and tap on it and your document is going to revert back to that point, but you still have the forward history there as well so that you can scroll back down to the bottom and get right back to where you were. Now you will notice that some of these entries have little icons next to them that look like little branching nodes. That's where you've made some changes and then gone backwards and made different changes. And so you have the option to choose which branch of history you look at if you just tap on that node. If we tap on that, we can have a whole nother set of actions that have taken place. In this case, there was just one. And I can tap on it again to go back to my original timeline. And then if you wanna be able to scrub quickly through the timeline, you can use the little scrubber at the bottom. So you can just drag that backwards or forwards as you want. Now the last thing is the snapshot. If you know there's a point that you're going to want to be able to get back to, you can save a snapshot just by hitting that and then hitting your plus button. And that's going to create a snapshot which you will then be able to get back to later. If you want to get rid of that snapshot, you can just select the snapshot and then hit minus. So let's see how a snapshot would work. Let's go way back here, maybe to like the beginning of our list of options here, where we just have the one cloud not set in isometric. And let's make a snapshot of that. Make a snapshot here. Then we'll go back into our history. We'll go all the way forward in our history and then go to our snapshots, tap on our snapshot and hit this little arrow, which will jump us all the way back to that snapshot. Now you can see that restore a snapshot has been added to our history. So if we want to get back to where we were before, we will have to hit the history item right before that and now we're back to where we were. So that can be useful. In reality, I don't use this history studio really very much because I try to always make duplications of everything so that I can view all of my iterations simultaneously. Some people don't work that way, but I think that's really the best way to work. And the history is more of just a backup for me to be able to go back if I made a mistake and I absolutely need to be able to go back. So depending on your workflow, this panel may be more or less useful to you. It is pretty cool to be able to see all of your history kind of gathered up in one place. All right, I hope that you've enjoyed learning a little bit about what the History Studio does here in Affine Designer on the iPad. That is actually going to wrap up all of the studios in Affine Designer on the iPad, at least for the designer persona, which is what we've been going through. My plan in the next tutorial videos is to go ahead and pick up any tools that have been added since I did the tools video for Affinity Designer, and then to go ahead and start doing tool videos about Affinity Photo. I've done some courses on Affinity Photo, but I haven't really dived into Affinity Photo on this channel at all. So that's my plan for the next things, but go ahead and drop in the comments. Let me know what you most wanna see from this channel as we go forward learning more about different tools and different programs on the iPad and on the desktop. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.